In physics these days, creation starts with the false vacuum, and then the forces sort of settle out of it, and you get gravitation, you get, you get the strong force, and you get eventually the electroweak force and electricity, and etc. If you start with a universe that is an infinite sea of cosmic jello, uniform in all directions, transparent, you try to make a distinction in it. This, this first distinction between inside and outside would be nice. You can't do it easily. If you carve a balloon out of jello in a sea of jello, and that's full of jello, because that's all there is, you haven't got any distinction. It's just jello. But if you do something, anything, any disturbance in the sea of jello compared to what was there before it would be an infinite disturbance, poof, fiat lux. When you go poof in the jello, the jello starts to fall through itself, it forms a smoke ring, you blow a little smoke ring in the air. And the smoke ring falls through itself. It's the lowest order self-referential form. And it separates what's outside of the smoke ring from what's inside the smoke ring. And you can always detect the smoke ring by virtue of the fact that the smoke is circulating. It's this dynamic quality that enables you to make a distinction. And so the smoke ring is the lowest order self-referential form. It's a topology of falling through itself. Ezekiel calls it a wheel of wheels. And it takes seven colors to map this, 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 this smoke ring. Now, in order to produce a self-referential system like this, it turns out mathematically you need four logical points, four logical states. And I don't think we can go into details on that, but um, if you want to know why there is a four cycle required to make a seven cycle, I would recommend the works of Arthur Young, Reflexive Universe, and many others. Four logical states form a logical structure, like a tetrahedron. Here's a little tetrahedron with four <coughs> orange logical states. <laughs> and the tetrahedron, most people think of as having only four spin axes of spin symmetry. But in fact, if you also look through the middle of the tetrahedron, from edge to edge, you can rotate it on three more axes, which is what these are. The four yellow axes are axes of spin symmetry. And symmetry is the important thing to a physicist. And also, you've got three additional axes, these purple ones, that you can also rotate the figure through. So you can think of a tetrahedron as a radial pack of seven vectors, and you can think of a vortex, a donut, as a cyclical array of seven vectors ch chasing each other. This one is structural. I'm sorry, this one is structural. This one is like process. This is like the acorn, and this is like the oak tree. And they co-define each other. The circulation through the axle is defined by the explosion of that point into the ring of three points. And the circulation around the tire tread is the cyclic circulation of the three points on top. This one can't be compressed, and this one can't fly apart as long as the dissipative flux flows through it. This one is cyclic. This one is structural. And so we end up with, if I can find the right chart, right in front of me here, a kind of mixture of these two objects, which are related to each other, the tetrahedron and the vortex. They both are seven objects, but they're arrayed differently. I could search for the quote, but I think because time is fleeting, I'll just tell you. Um, the Kabbalistic tradition teaches that unity, which is identified with God, exists when the flame is wedded to the coal. Another phrase that shows up in the Old Testament a lot is the so-called light in the meeting tent, tent of communion. If you think about it, these two objects are just about the most archetypal objects you could ever come up with. I don't know of any child that hasn't stared into a candle flame that's flickering, and just about every tradition considers that flickering flame to be somehow comparable to consciousness. Light and consciousness are identified with each other. Again, Arthur Young turned 
talks about how a photon has choice of what direction it comes off in, and that corresponds to conscious choice. It's the unit of action, the quantum of action in physics. And most folks, particularly in the olden time, used to um, cook their food around a uh, tripod of sticks called a <coughs> campfire, or spend the night in a pup tent or a tent. So a little tetrahedral tent and a little flame are common to all of our consciousness in all traditions. And they, they can be understood as having these kind of dual qualities, these qualities of lack of symmetry. Every way you look at this figure, it looks different. There are an infinite number of views. And this figure, which has extreme symmetry, tetrahedron has, has really extreme symmetry. And I could also use a cube, but the lowest order, the most elegant object of symmetry is the tetrahedron. So that's the universal, the one to pick. Um, there is an oracle talked about in Mosaic times called the Urim and the Thummim, also mentioned by the Mormons, is used to translate their golden plates. No one knows what they are. They're supposed to be a, something related to the 12 jewels on the breastplate of the high priest, whatever that might mean. If you had a solid tetrahedron, of course, and you looked inside of it, you'd see three reflections on each of the four faces, and so they would be like 12 jewels. 12 sparkling ways to look at it. And that was used as an oracle to interpret the text. In the Greek traditions, the oracle at Delphi the, the um, Torah text, the Genesis text. It was other, there were other uses, too. It was also used just as an oracle. Uh, the first uh, paragraph or more than just the, the, the whole thing. <coughs> the oracle at Delphi, sat, you sat on a tripod, or the oracle sat on the tripod, and around the tripod was Python the snake. Well, here's Python. <coughs> and so the oracle at Delphi takes the same form, the same geometric metaphor. And again, I'm, I'm saying that this is basically, um, this is the consciousness, this is the mind, this is body, this is yin, this is yang, this is feminine and masculine, wave and particle, analog and discrete. Uh, it also looks like a root, a dragon, a serpent. Um, the tetrahedron is related to a vessel or a shell or a nut in, in metaphorical use in the, te in the text. When one plugs these meanings, which I'm going to tell you about in more detail, into the Kabbalistic texts, they don't read like poetry anymore. They read much more like Euclid, like, like a very logical geometrical system. I'll give you an example, uh, if I can find it quickly. Maybe I can't find it quickly, so I'm not going to bother with that. Well, here's, here's an interesting example. This is from Gregory Vlastos's um, book called Plato's Universe, where he talks about Plato considering that the fiery part of the wick would therefore consist of a string of tetrahedra. The flame and the tetrahedra are thought of as, as being together in the Greek tradition as well as in the Hebrew. Let's see if I can find something. No, all right, let's let that go. Um, by the way, the alphabets here are rabbinic alphabets from the Islamic period in Spain. And that's also the same period where the Arabic letters match the form, too. Um, I think that the, the so-called sacred forms on top are stylizations of these that had to be added when the model was lost to maintain distinctions between letters that would otherwise look very much alike. That you couldn't distinguish between certain letters without the model, and so that they had to have these stylizations. But look, there's something peculiar about all these letters. There are decorations on nine of the letters, which I've indicated in purple, called tagin, crownlets. They come in little triple crownlets. If you take the form that the first verse of Genesis makes, and since it has these three ears on it, you can see it a little better here where I've colored them three different colors. There's this 13 petal rose, cube octahedron, vector equilibrium in the middle, and there's a vortex coming out of each face, and each of the three are different. You can start out, they sort of start out as these little loops. What are they? How, how does this really happen? Well, here's our tetrahedron, here's our seed. This is the, the lowest order symmetrical object in three dimensions. Tetrahedron is what happens when you take